For this part two, we're gonna mix up an Arista uh, Rapid E6 kit and process two rolls of Kodak Ektachrome. So uh, without further ado, let's dive right in. Before I get started on mixing anything, I'm gonna go ahead and load uh, my two rolls of Kodak Ektachrome onto these two Patterson reels and put them in this tank. So I, I gotta do all of that within this changing bag here. So let's go ahead and make that happen. And with that, I'm going to set it aside. We'll process that after we mix up our chemistry. Got our instructions for mixing, and it also will uh, go over how to develop. So all the bottles are labeled. You've got first developer, color developer A, Blix A, Blix B, Blix C, and this color developer B. Kind of will separate them like that. So I've got the one quart kit. This gives you instructions for one pint, one quart, and one gallon. It does have some notes about uh, pushing and pulling too. All right, so let's go ahead and mix this up. It's saying that for the first bit here, we need 24 ounces of water at 111 degrees. Let's go ahead and run our tap here and get 111 degree water going. I'm going to rinse this while I get the water up to temp. Getting started with our first developer here. I've marked my bottle and I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. All right, so I've got 24 ounces of water here, stirring continuously as we pour in. Here's our first developer. These kits undergo all kinds of color changes as you start processing rolls. It's really fun to watch. Go ahead and pour this into my container here. All right. So now we've mixed up our first developer. And I'm going to put it on into the sous vide. We'll go ahead and rinse out our measuring graduate and prepare to mix our color developer. And it's stating that the color developer is 115 degrees. So we got to get 115 degree water going here. And while I get my tap up to temp, I usually use that time to rinse out my measuring graduate. Right, so it's saying we need 22 ounces of water for the color developer and it's a two bottle thing here. We got two different things we got to mix. I'm not really crucial on the temperature on these things because I put it in my, my sous vide after this and just let it cook up to temp. I don't mind waiting. I want everything to be at the proper temperature it needs to be at. So 22 ounces right in between the 24 and the 20 here. Color developer A. All right, color developer B. That's a fun color change. Sweet, my sous vide just got up to temp. All right, so color developer, pour this on in. Make sure to mark all your bottles. Alrighty, so now we've got our first developer and our color developer both mixed up. Lastly, we've got our Blix. So again, rinsing out our container. It says to mix it up at 140, and I never really do that. I'll just do it as hot as my tap will go. I, I have my water heater set a little bit lower than that. So in this case, I'll do about 120 degrees, mix it up, and yeah, be good to go. I'll put it in my sous vide and come back in maybe a half hour and everything should be at temp. 
All right, for our Blix, we need 14 ounces of water. And it's asking for 140 degrees, but I'm doing 120 here and it'll be just fine. So it states at the bottom of this, water temperature listed will bring room temperature concentrates to 101.5 for working solution. And I never really follow exactly the water temperatures that are listed here. I just go into the ballpark. I think that it's more about getting your kit to temp afterwards and I'm not as worried about that. I've got all my chemicals in the sous vide and I'll let them get to a proper temp and develop in a little bit. Alrighty, so we got Blix part A. Blix part B and you can just tell by looking at this thing that it's going to give this a major color change. This one will stain things too so please be careful. Blix is no joke. Another thing that it states on here is that the final volumes can vary ever so slightly and that won't have any effect on processing. So hopefully that puts your mind at ease in terms of making sure that you have it down to the, you know, exact precise amount of water. I don't think that that's as crucial. Uh, I usually err on the side of a little bit more as opposed to a little bit less. But, uh, you know, aiming for accuracy is always good. All right, putting in Blix Part C. So now that we got that all mixed up, we'll go ahead and give it a pour. All righty, so again, we'll rinse out my measuring graduate. I like to rinse off my thermometer as well because I use it for a lot of mixing. Alrighty, and now this will go into my sous vide. So I've got water in here, which is good to have at the same temperature as everything else as my pre-wash. I've got my E6 first developer, E6 color developer, and my Blix. So all that's ready to go. It's probably somewhat near temp because I did mix things at a, a higher temperature here, but I still am going to let this cook in the sous vide. I've got this set for 106, which actually gives me 105. This thing's a little bit silly, but uh, I've tested it with my, with my thermometer and it's working good. So I'll give this a half hour, come back to it, and I'll be fully ready to develop because I've already loaded my film onto the reels and I've got my chemicals getting ready. So once it's actually time to develop, uh, it should be smooth sailing. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. That's all it took for the chemicals to get up to temperature. I've got my tank here with the two rolls in there and we're ready to develop. So let's go through the process step by step. I should note that I'm gonna do rotary process. I'll show the rotary processor here in a second, but uh, doing hand inversions like this works just fine. The only difference being here, I'm gonna use half the chemistry and I don't really have to mess with anything. I'm gonna put the chemicals in the tank, put it on the rotary processor and let it, do, let it do its thing. The other thing to note is that E6 requires a wash in between uh, your first developer and your color developer. And then again, between your color developer and your Blix. And then of course, you're gonna to have to wash at the end of everything as well. So just wanted to make note of all that. Let's go ahead and dive right on in. One thing I highly recommend as you start going through the process is you initially have a bottle of water for your pre-wash that's already up to temp in your sous vide or in whatever water bath you use to heat your chemistry. And then also to have just a, a jug like this. this is a one gallon jug and I'll use this in between. I'll fill it up with 105 degree water and use this for my washes in between. That way I'm not continuously running the tap and that way I also have the, temp the proper temperature water ready to go right off the bat. So be sure to have uh, one of those ready or some kind of any kind of gallon jug that my old distilled water jugs would work perfect for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to pour in our pre-wash. Pre-wash we're going to do for 60 seconds. Here we go. There. 
60 seconds on the clock. And I'm just going to go ahead and do hand inversions for this bit. Just to show you a little bit of what that's, that's like. So we got hand inversions going here for our pre-wash. And this is going to go ahead and go down the drain when we're done. Alright, so let's go ahead and pour out our pre-wash. Oh, that's a fun color. And we're going to go straight to our first developer, which in our instructions is stated to go for six and a half minutes. So let's be ready with a six and a half minute timer. I'm going to go ahead and set one on my phone. Six and a half minutes. All right. And it's important to watch the clock if you're doing hand inversions. I'm doing all rotary today, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and let it cook until it lets me know I need to take my developer out. And I'm not measuring this here. It should be about 500 milliliters to do half, but I'm just kind of going by feel. All right, that should be good. I didn't pour the whole bottle in, but I poured in, you know, a bit. And we're going to put this on the rotary processor. All righty. I'll kind of slap it sometimes, and we'll start our timer. And just let that cook. So what, that's on the bees processor there. Now while that's going, that's a really good time to go ahead and get a wash ready. So I will start my sink and let's see here. I should make note I have an electric water heater over here so I'm able to set the temperature it does take a second for everything to get up to temp, but once it's at temp, it, it stays pretty steady. Alright, so... Alright, so 105. Let's go ahead and fill this up for our wash water. Got this full, it's ready with 105 degree water that I'm gonna wash my film with. Really, I'll fill it three, maybe four times and dump it and then I move on to my color developer and my Blix. So, our film has completed its first process which is called first developer. Alrighty. So, I've poured out my first developer back into its container and we're going to save it for later. Remember these chemicals do not go down the drain. We save them and we reuse them for a bit. Get a little bit of air out of this. Not all of it, but a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and wash now. So we need to quickly go ahead and wash the film and I'll let it fill up entirely. And then I'll dump it. I'll usually kind of rinse out the lid while I do this too. Fill it up again. And dump again. I can rinse the lid a little bit again. And probably one more in here. But I'll fill it up all the way and let it kind of overflow. Yeah, there we go. All right. So there was three wash cycles. And we're going to go ahead and do our color developer, it's called. So this is the second process in the E6 kit. All right. And this one's going to go for four and a half minutes. Get my lid on and we gotta get our timer set here. So one tip is if you get the lid squeezed on all the way, lift one end of it and squeeze in the center and then reseal and that'll create a vacuum seal and you won't have to deal with leaks as much. Some of the Patterson tanks won't do this, but this one does and I'm grateful for that. Right now I'm filling up 105 degree water 
for the wash cycles in between developer, second developer, and Blix. So right now it's second developer. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour this back into the container. Sometimes the chemicals will foam a little bit, so be cautious of that. And we want to move quickly to our next wash, so I'm going to go ahead and get my cap on and start filling my tank. So I filled it up all the way, go ahead and dump it, fill it up all the way, dump it. I'll fill it up one more time. So I'll do three rinses with the 105 degree water in this last one. I, I let it overflow completely. And I try not to pour out too fast. I want to pour it out slow. I want to make sure I get everything out. So that's done and we're ready for our Blix, which it states as a 10 minute process, but it states for rotary tube, it states it as six and a half. I kind of do the in-between, so I'm going to do uh, eight and a half minutes of Blix. So let's go ahead and Blix. And I just have to say that E6 is so much fun because of being able to see the product afterwards. It's kind of like, uh, I, I would equate it a little bit to Polaroid, somewhat similar to the feeling of Polaroid. You actually get to see the image afterwards and not a negative. Which negatives are cool, but E6 it kind of has a magical feel. Alright, let that cook for eight and a half minutes. There was our Blix. Go ahead and start running my, my faucet here because we're going to start washing our film and we need to wash it at 105 degrees. So it states to do running water for five minutes and you want to do this at 105 degrees. So I'll go ahead and let it start washing. I'll rinse my lid at this point too. And I'm not comfortable with just letting it run under the faucet. I at least want to fill the tank and empty it seven or eight times. You can do it as many as you're comfortable with, or you can just do the running water for five minutes. I mean, they state that that is okay. There's just something about that that I'm not comfortable with, because every time I pour this out, there's a little bit of color to it. Once I dump it a few times, though, I will reduce the uh, amount of water pressure because I think the, the running water wash should be something that is a little bit lower intensity and it will allow all the sediment or anything that would be in there from the, the chemistry to uh, be removed as opposed to if it's you know just pushing down things will stay at the bottom. So that, for that reason when I pour out my wash water I don't do it very fast either. I'm not trying to just like throw it out I just want it to ease out of the tank like that. And if we look on here, there, we should have images. Oh, cool. Yeah, grab. It's always magical every time. Every time I process film, it's still the same for me. It's the same feeling I had in high school. I love that. That magic, that a little bit of mystery to it, you know. The film is all washed now, and we're gonna go ahead and hang it to dry. Looks like the rolls turned out. We'll let those dry. And we'll come back and scan them in a little bit. All right, so we took a look at developing this slide film, and now let's take a look at some of the slides that I actually developed. I also included some flowers that I shot on another walk, so this isn't just the two rolls of film that I developed in the video, but this is developed with that same kit. This is the third and fourth roll to go through the kit. And I processed some rolls for some customers as well. So if you have any E6 slide film that you'd like developed, go ahead and send it on my way. Check out my Instagram, think more, shoot less. There's a PO box number on there, so you go ahead and just package up your film and send it my way along with a Venmo or PayPal invoice uh, address and email address so that I can send you your scans. As always, think more, shoot less. Thank mm -hmm. you.